Hey everyone! Today I want to complain about a phrase that I've seen a lot of smart people use uh, on Facebook, in blog posts, in conversation, um, and the phrase is, I can't understand how anyone could think fill in the blank. So uh, I can't understand how anyone could be against gun control, or I can't understand how anyone could like Donald Trump, just to name some recent examples. Um, and even when I agree with the position held by the person saying this phrase, I still don't like the phrase. And the one big reason why I don't like it was captured beautifully by Megan McArdle um, in a blog post a few months back, in which she says, phrases like this are interesting because they have three levels of meaning, and I'm going to call them the literal, the intended, and the true meaning. So at the bottom literal level, the literal meaning is, I lack the knowledge and understanding of how someone could believe X. But that's not what they intend by writing that phrase or saying that phrase. What they intend is, at the second level, something more like a signal of how strongly they feel about their side or a signal of how dumb they think the other side is. Um, it's as if to say, I'm such a superior, uh, cognitively, morally superior being that uh, I can't even identify, I can't identify at all with the, you know, mistakes that would lead someone to believe this wrong thing. However, Megan continues, the true meaning, level three, is much closer to the literal meaning. It is, I lack the knowledge and understanding. But more specifically in this case, I lack the empathy or imagination or, or, or analytical skill to uh, even begin to try to figure out why someone would hold that position. And I was thinking about this in the context of things that skeptics often say. And the phrase is, I can't understand how anyone could think that science detracts from beauty or from the beauty of the physical world or the natural world. This is a really common trope. I've, I've heard lots of, of popularizers of science say this. In fact, I read Feynman saying something along these lines recently, or I recently read Feynman saying something along these lines. He didn't say it recently. Uh, he was talking to, or recounting a conversation with a friend of his who is an artist, and the artist held up this flower and said, look how beautiful this flower is, uh, and yet you scientists, you ruin it by, by explaining, you know, how the flower works. And Feynman said, you know, s science just makes the flower more beautiful. It just provides all these additional layers of understanding of how the flower works, each of which is beautiful. And so he, con he concludes... The science only adds, I can't understand how it subtracts. Now, I'm personally much closer to Feynman's aesthetic than to the artist's aesthetic, but I still don't like that he used that phrase. I still think it was bad form, basically. Not socially bad form, but, but epistemically bad form. And with just a little bit of effort, even though I share Feynman's aesthetic, I can understand the aesthetic of the artist. And I don't know him I don't know the artist personally, so I don't know what was in his head, but I can at least come up with some plausible stories for why someone would say what the artist said. So, for example, the property of mystery is a, a common, uh, commonly held to be a beautiful um, aesthetic property. So, just as an intuition pump, imagine that you found a key lying on the street. Now, you don't know where that key is from, you don't know what door it unlocks, uh, but there's something kind of beautiful about the mystery of this key that unlocks some door somewhere in the world, but you don't know where. Um, and almost certainly if you were to find out the answer to that mystery, oh, the key unlocks this apartment uh, five blocks from here, uh, it would not be revelatory or particularly satisfying or beautiful. And generally, the lack of an answer in cases like that is more aesthetically pleasing than whatever answer you could get. So that's one thing. Uh, another reason I could imagine for the aesthetic taste of the artist comes down to something called constral level theory. So uh, constral level theory says that we have two different modes of thinking, or maybe it's a spectrum, but there's sort of two clusters or two points on the spectrum. They're near mode and far mode. Um, near mode is the mode that we're in when we're thinking about concrete details or examples or immediate situations or decisions. Um, whereas far mode is more zoomed out, big picture, abstract thinking about principles or, or you know, abstract concepts. 
And you can end up thinking very differently about the same kind of thing if you're in near mode versus far mode. So in far mode, you might be like, well, what is, is, is there even really such a thing as truth? And then in near mode, you might be like, that guy's telling me that this car is worth $100,000. I don't think that's true. <laughs> I've had this experience with people where they'll uh, make some claim when they're clearly thinking in sort of abstract far mode that I've seen them, I've seen in, in practice that they don't believe when they're in, in near mode. But anyway, far mode can have a certain beauty to it, even though sometimes I think it steers you wrong. There's a certain beauty to abstraction and, and to the sort of zoomed up big picture uh, view that you get of a situation or a physical thing. So for example, the big picture um, far mode way of thinking about oceans allows you to view the ocean as kind of a, a symbol of various things, um, a symbol of vastness or the unknown and there's a certain beauty to that. But if I take you to an actual ocean and point at a, a spot in the ocean, then, you know, you can see the dirt floating on the surface, you can see that bit of algae there, and you're seeing details that are kind of taking away from this abstract, zoomed out notion of the ocean. So even though I share Feynman's preferences, and even though I think Probably the world would be better off if more people thought like Feynman than like the artist, although that could be a topic for another video. I still think it's, it's bad form to stop thinking at the point where you're saying to yourself, I can't understand how anyone could think X. At best, it's lazy, and at worst, it's disingenuous.